Welcome back to another session of Ask a Pastor. Again, in these videos, we want to provide a context that we can address questions that come in. In, in this format, it gives us another opportunity just to get to things that we can't get to in some other areas of the church. So hopefully we can be helpful to you. We've been addressing questions related to singleness. Uh, last week, we looked specifically at some uh, things that we can do if we're in a situation where we're single, we want to be married, but we're not finding uh, a spouse. And this week, we want to look at the question of celibacy. How do I know if I have the gift of celibacy? Uh, and, and the related question, do I need to be married? So to begin to ask this, answer this question, there's some foundational things that need to be in place. Um, we teach, we understand the scripture to teach that marriage is, is normative. The normal uh, progress in the life of a believer is to grow up in their home, to be raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and ultimately to leave and cleave, to be united to a spouse. Um, it's normative, it's not uh, commanded as a universal. In other words, there are some people who will not be married. And as we talked about in this series, there's some um, who will not be married presently, even though they want to be, but providentially, the situation that providence of the Lord has put them in is that they are not currently married. But then there's this additional question of, do I need to be married? Uh, and the related question of celibacy, this gift of celibacy. So to begin to answer the question, I'm going to begin with the do I need to be married question. It's related to the other one. Do I need to be married? Well, first of all, you want to begin by asking why are you asking that question? Uh, is it because, you know, marriage scares you for some reason? Uh, maybe you had a, a really tough home life, you saw a very poor example of marriage. Uh, there could be lots of different things in your past that that cause you to kind of pull back and, and, and resist and, and kind of move away from that. And that is something that needs to be worked through, that you need to address. But it's not a reason biblically to say, oh, because, you know, for whatever reason, uh, I'm skeptical of marriage or nervous about marriage. Therefore, I the marriage is not for me. I, I don't need to be married. We want to address those things while understanding that marriage is good. Marriage is, is a gift and um, most people are called to be married in their lives. So that's the first area and kind of flowing out of that, we want to begin to ask other questions. If you're saying, you know, do I need to be married? Um, there's a, another area to, to think through in terms of, you know, are there's many reasons why you might not want to be married that are uh, unbiblical and actually things that need to be put to death in your life. You know, for example, it's tr you might just be very selfish and you think marriage, like then I have to, you know, share my life with another person and there'll be children um, and I don't want that. I like to be able to just kind of determine my own way. Well. The Bible comes to you and says, okay, um, that's selfish. You need to come back to the drawing board and you need to deal with selfishness in your life. This doesn't directly really have to do with marriage, does it? It has to do with some other area uh, of sinfulness that's present. And so that would be an unbiblical reason to say, well, because of that, therefore, marriage is just not going to be for me. And so there's, there's obviously more things that you could think about in those lines. But it's important to ask that question of why, why do I think about this in this way? Why is it, do I need to be married? Why is that question a question for me? And it's connected then to this question of the gift of celibacy. Often uh, the, the church has spoken of the gift of singleness and this is uh, not helpful and it's not biblical. And the reason is because in 1 Corinthians 7, when Paul talks about a gift, uh, he doesn't talk about the gift of, of singleness. He does talk about the gift of celibacy. And it's just consider the series that we've been working through here. Uh, for many people, 
Singleness is anything but a gift. It's, it's, it's a burden. It feels like a curse even. They want to be married, but they're not presently married. It's difficult. And the Bible addresses that. You think of the beginning. It was not good for man to be alone. It wasn't good for Adam to not have a spouse in that context of the garden. Uh, and so for him to remain that way would not have been a gift. Uh, it would have been a burden. It would have been a curse. Um, very difficult. And so we've made it hard for a lot of people who find themselves without a spouse by telling them about the gift of singleness when they don't experience it that way at all. And that's because they don't have the gift that's a biblical gift. And that's the gift of celibacy. So Paul addresses this in 1 Corinthians 7. And he specifically talks about uh, that in, in verse 8. He says, To the unmarried and to the widows, I say it's good for them to remain single as I am. But if they can't exercise self-control, they should marry. For it's better to marry than to burn with passion. So the person who has the gift of celibacy is someone who, first of all, has their sexual desires in order and under control. And so we can rule out this gift for a lot of people. If we just ask, well, are, are your sexual desires in order and not out of control? If you're engaged in any kind of sexual immorality, you know that you don't have the gift. You need to put to death that sin and definitely understand that you don't have this gift. It's not for you. The second thing in just specifically with celibacy to think about is that uh, all of these instructions here that Paul's giving uh, are for a specific occasion, right? So he, once he talks about uh, even in um, uh, verse 8, to the unmarried, to the widows, I say it's good for them to remain single as I am. He is not talking universally for all times and places. He said in this passage that we're talking about the present distress. There's a, there is something that is presently going on, a, a time of excruciating difficulty, um, which makes it better in that circumstance for someone to not be married, for someone who is betrothed to, to just remain in that station and not actually get married. This isn't a universal thing. And so we need to take that kind of, burden off people to think about it in that way. So someone who is able to exercise self-control, they're not burning with passion as Paul says here in verse 8. And they may have the gift then of celibacy. And what is the gift for? The gift is for a specific focused devotion to the work of the kingdom specific and focused devotion to the work of the kingdom. It's not for someone who uh, loves to be able to go where they want and do what they want. And this is, I think, where we've confused a lot of people in the church because in the world, there's a lot of people who celebrate singleness because they don't want to be fettered by a spouse. They don't want to be fettered by this burden of children, right? They think about it all wrongly. And then that gets baptized in the church and you have people growing up and they think, hey, uh, you know, I'm gonna go off to college. I kind of like this sort of free life and, and I kind of want to do my own thing and I have my own ambitions and, and I'm gonna just pursue those. And then all of a sudden it gets baptized. Well, they have the gift of singleness. Well, that's not what the gift is for. It's not for you. It's for someone who's going to live uh, in, in an unmarried state, specifically that they can devote themselves to the work of the kingdom in a unique way. And so those are some of the things we have to think about if we're thinking about, do I have the gift of, single, uh, the gift of celibacy? And do I need to be married? Let's address some of those issues and work through them before we can really answer that question. Don't be quick to say that you have that gift or to say that marriage isn't for you if we really need to deal with some other things first. Once we've done that, then there are individuals who, like Paul says, um, it's good for them to remain as they are. It's good for them to devote themselves to the work of the kingdom in a, in a unique way as an unmarried person. 
Um, but that's going to be the exception. Those individuals are going to be rare. And we need to make sure we understand that. So the last thing I would say is that's not a question for you to just work out, you know, in the lonesomeness of your own thoughts in your mind. Work that out with godly believers. Seek spiritual counsel in the context of your church. Uh, address it with your pastors and, and you'll be helped to answer it well, to answer it biblically. And I think you'll be saved um, from confusion and from going down a path that would be eventually unhelpful or that you'd find yourself in a situation where you know you thought you had this gift and 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 you delayed marriage for 10 or 20 years and now you actually realize that oh maybe i should be pursuing marriage but it's gonna be a lot harder so that's the brief answer to another big question we're just skimming the surface in these videos but hopefully that provides things for you to think on to pray towards to meditate on and that's the last question in this series of uh, questions related to singleness in the church. And next time we'll come back with new questions that we will be addressing from you. So I hope that's helpful. We pray that these are helpful and let us continue to love one another in the bond of peace.